It's the 501, baby. Uh-huh. You know how we get down on the Wolfie podcast. Woo. Shout out OD, shout out G Holmes, it's the best. Big sexy. Welcome back to another episode of the Woo Pig Podcast, coming to you live from the Insurance Max Studios, where we talking about everything Arkansas Razorback football and basketball every Monday, Thursday, and Saturday. Also, man, don't forget to check us out on the website, thewoopig.com. Make sure you check that out for us one time. But we want you to experience peace of mind with Insurance Max, your one-stop solution for home, auto, and commercial insurance insurance statewide don't wait call today for a free no obligation quote secure your future with insurance max where protection meets affordability dial now and safeguard what matters most holler at my guys caleb west and sandy 870-534-2823 and man the whoopig podcast we stream it on all major platforms facebook youtube twitter and twitch make sure you subscribe to us on all our platforms and if you enjoy the audio-only version of our podcast, you can check us out everywhere, including Apple Podcasts, but we really rock with Spotify because you can switch between audio and video. Check us out over there as well. And I want you to do me a favor. Even if you don't listen to the audio version, go subscribe to the Spotify so we can make sure we, we run that up. Something special. We're we trying to get something special over there. Help us out. Go to Spotify. Subscribe. I don't even care if you don't listen to it. But just subscribe. Now, can't forget about our OG sponsor, 3M Electric. They're your trusted commercial and residential electrical contractor. As an SDV, OSB, they're dependable and reliable with no job, too big or small. When it comes to your electrical needs, contact 3M Electric, 479-408-9865. Let them know you heard it on the Woopig podcast. They got something special for you. And you already know who I got in the building. <laughs> Yo, it's your boy G Holmes in the building, aka Big Sexy. Somebody out there holler for me. Oh, oh, oh my God! Yeah, yeah. Ah, what a duo, D. Hey, we back. Had a great Man, weekend. We back. Man, we had a good time. Yes, sir. You know we got to take the bad little brother everywhere we go. Hopefully, <sighs> we don't know if he here. Hey, oh, man, we don't know what he got going on. <laughs> He halfway hey, in the closet, halfway out the closet. Let me hey. tell y'all, man. If anybody know anything about equipment, when you start plugging up new stuff, it get real crazy. So it's, it's been a day, man. It's been a day. But what it do, Wu Pig fam? Hey, we back in the building. We back. Man, in we the had a, man, we had a good time. Y'all have a good weekend, man. It was a good weekend, man. Kicking it with everybody that showed up out there at walk ons. Man, we appreciate the love. Uh, sure. Man, it's going to take me a little bit of a, a time to get through some of these, uh, some man, of the names. So I'm gonna, huh? Let's go ahead and thank our peoples, man. All the people that showed up, we got to thank them right now up front off the top. Yeah, off the top. So we had Dustin uh, Ross. That's uh, big man Ross and his wife. Oh, they came out and kicked it with us. Uh, my homeboy uh, Ramon Ramirez from Little Rock. Everybody know Coach Box. He was here from Little Rock. The bad little brother. He was here from Little Rock. We had our sponsors, uh, 3M Electric and his family. That's uh, Mantrail, Netta, uh, Mariah, and my little nephew, Chipper. They were all in the house supporting us. Uh, we had Daryl Lee from Rogers. Uh, Sherelle Miller. She's from Lowell, Arkansas. Ryan Graves. He's from Arkansas. Then we had the Metcalf, Mom and Dad, Neely, and uh, Terrace Metcalf. And they were from Birmingham, Alabama. 
We had my other sister-in-law, Pam, and uh, Randy Coleman, the, the famous Hall of Famer, the B-I-Z. Uh, he was in the building. Uh, Jordan Cox and uh, Kaylee Cox. I guess they were from Warren, Arkansas. Uh, that's I can't you know his uh, that's the wife of the mm -hmm. the guy that's I, I didn't you know catch her name. huh I didn't catch her name her name was Jordan I think that was his wife's name mm -hmm. but they were there from up from Warren Arkansas Destiny Neely from Arkansas uh, Mama Armstrong she was in the building uh, she had her sister with her Cynthia uh, from DeSoto Texas and also their dad Mr Orville Sherman. Uh, he was a big hit, man. He, uh, him and April hit it off, man. That was, that was a lot of fun, man. We appreciate you guys. Also, we had Matt and his wife. They are, they're from Conway. Uh, Chris Walker from Bentonville. Martin Derby. Uh, Camo. That's Camo. That's always in the comments from Camo Bentonville. Gang. Camo. Yeah, Camo Gang. Yeah. Uh, some of these, like, these last ones are Jay Hay. Can't remember. I can't hardly. It's kind of unlegible. Uh, Carlos Singleton, I think that's uh, uh, is that, Malachi Singleton's dad. Yeah, uh, of course we had Tonka Todd uh, in the building and Ken Ray. Uh, then we had some great waitresses. Uh, I'm gonna mess this up, man. We ain't gonna eat. Humana. <laughs> Humana. Just get through it fast, okay? <laughs> man, I'm just saying, Humana and Sierra, they were great uh, waitresses, man. So. Those are all the people that showed up for us, man. And I think there were some more people. We had some recruits and stuff. I don't think I didn't get those names down. I think DZ got the names. So we had several players that stopped by. Andrew Armstrong. Uh, what's the other players that stopped through? Uh, yeah, man. Metcalf, we had uh, Andrew Armstrong and the Metcalf's brother. Uh, the uh, Metcalf brothers. Uh, we had, you know, Tay Lockett. He came down with a couple of his yeah. guys from Cali. Uh, some really yeah. um, cool three- and four-star players that we – Hope to get on the hill in the future. It was it was just oh, yeah. love everywhere, man. It was it was man, a it was awesome. Night. Hey, QB yeah, four awesome, drops so. in on us. Yeah, so oh, talking, yeah, uh, Queen Grovy. Yeah, Touch Talk with Ty came through and kicked it with us as well. So yeah, we had a good right, time. Right, right. Yeah, it was we, nice, we a, man. We had a good time, nice. man. Hey, Huston Clark didn't the, show up, man. We we trying to get Huston Clark on to come on the podcast, man. We working. Man, on that dude is. <laughs> <laughs> man, you know better than that. That's hey, okay. Like come and talk to us, man. Hey, I'm gonna get Hustle Clock on the show. Mark my words, man. man. Well, we're gonna get him on the show, it. man. You heard what I said. We can do it. Hey, Hustle, we don't hate you, bro. You wearing that Razorback red, dog. We just want nah, to see you, you win. You feel me? <laughs> hey, oh man. yeah. Don't for, oh, we forgot about Caleb and uh, Brody. Uh, that was with Wes. They didn't yeah. sign in. I, I forgot Bad. those. I knew it was somebody ex. My young guy. My bad on that nephew. You sure were. And they, they came and kicked it at the game with us as well. Uh, we got to go down and uh, have a little personal session with the uh, uh, mascots. was real cool. So we we appreciate everybody that uh, came and rocked with us. Absolutely. <laughs> somebody talking about Biz said, where is $40 at? Hey, man. I promise you, if I get it to you, you better not spend it. I meant that. Well, let's, well, let's get into the show, man. Uh, man, <laughs> getting into the show, we saw Taylor Green. He did his thing. Yeah. Uh, I'm sorry, he did. What What impressed y'all the most about Taylor Green, man? <sighs> G, you want to get into like, it first? Well, I mean, I like the I like his size. He looked good in pads. That's that's mm -hmm. the first thing. But like, you know, while we were. You know, looking at him in the warm ups and stuff, he looked good under you know under some pads, and he looks uh, he he kind of puts in, uh, I want to say me in the mind of the Cam Newton build. I remember seeing Cam Newton play, and Cam Newton was just he was tall, muscular, you know, just a, a real fast, shifty guy, making the strong throws across field. He he's got that type of stature, and so then when I got into it and and was just watching him. And not really full speed, but just really kind of, you know, kind of displaying some of that game time speed. I really did enjoy that. Also, when it came to him making those uh, uh, those post routes, man, he, he got the arm to make those po post routes. And I'm talking about he dropping them in the bread basket. I mean, you know, a lot of these, these plays that these uh, uh, receivers are making, they're making those things, you know, from the chest area. 
you know, where, where they can be in control of, of their positioning. So I really like his ball placement and his overall speed. So I'm excited about uh, about him. Easy, what about you? Uh, you know, going into it, I told myself, you know what? I'm not going to allow myself to just get crazy or googly-eyed over this. I'm going to go in and I'm going to try my best to tear him down. And let me say this. I still ended up googly-eyed. Hey, we ain't had a quarterback that can throw layered passes in a minute. We ain't Man, had a quarterback that can put a foot in the ground and go for 30 in two seconds. I mean, don't get me wrong, KJ Caron. I don't even want to bring up KJ. It's about Taylor, dog. The, I think the most impressive thing to me was it, it seemed like the more the game went on, the more comfortable he got and the more dangerous he got. I mean, it mm. didn't look like a guy that was in his first year in a Bobby P offense. It it just felt comfortable by the time we was in that second quarter. So I'm really a big fan of Taylor, and I see superstar potential. Like, it's it's not all the way there yet, but it's you see it. Some things just pop out to you, especially his deep ball accuracy, sideline. Oh, my God, corner, the end zone. He, he has yeah, some he was stuff, the so. Yeah. yeah, so I'm definitely yeah. a fan, and we definitely got our QB1, in my opinion. Well, for me... Uh, I think what impressed me most was how fast the dude is. Dude is super fast. Oh, yeah. I'm like, if the DN <clears throat> peaking, boy, he done. Mm, he yeah, done. He is done. I'm if he get to that corner dude. on you, yeah. yeah if they lose corner so containment, man. Man. he, he goes so because fast. he's deceptive, ain't he? Yep. Like you don't see it coming. It's like it, it looked like he just about to up, then zoom. It's like it, it's literally Lamar. Like I hate calling people Lamar Jackson, but the speed is there. It's different. Mm. Yeah. So yeah. So definitely, uh, Taylor Green uh, looking like we, you know, money well spent so far. Uh, everybody okay. said he he's had some some down points in the in, in this um, this camp, but they had a game plan to make him look good when he came out there. He definitely did that. Uh, it was a lot of one read, get the ball out real quick. Uh, they look efficient. They look efficient, and uh, I think he took a couple sacks. But hey, mm -hmm. we'll see. I, I would have loved to see him go up against the ones and not the twos. Nice. Uh, but I'm 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 cool. I'm I'm looking forward to what he what he can do, and um, he they gonna definitely have to respect his his speed, which is gonna give the running back. A lot that he ain't really got to contend with. He ain't got to worry about the DN uh, coming down tackling him because if he do, he going for he going for twenty real quick. So mm -hmm. one move on him. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, let me read my super chats real quick. I got a couple of them already. Uh, let's see here. Hey, Little Rock two five seven man, we appreciate you, man. Thanks for supporting the channel. <laughs> And we got big man Ross. Love your family. Yes, sir. Man, man. We had a good time, man. Yeah, big man Ross kicked it with us sat like Saturday, all Friday day, Friday night. Friday night. Hey, big man Ross, he was kicking it with us, man. He was. Hey, there. When I got home Sunday, we hopped on a game together. So that's my brother. <laughs> man. When you when you join this we pig family, it's a true family, dog. It's real business. Hey, shout out to my guy Matt, man. One word. He talking about Taylor Green special. Yeah, yeah sure. that's facts. But man, we appreciate y'all supporting us, man. We really do, man. So jumping back over here, man, we want to talk about the winners and the losers mm -hmm. of the spring game. Now, each one of us came up with our own winners and losers. For me, the winner by far, freshman quarterback. KJ Jackson, man. Mm. The boy, now I want I want to put this in perspective. Mm. This dude still should be in high school. He should be mm. he should be getting ready to go to his prom right now. But he out there reading defenses. He dropped some dimes. He threaded the ball. 15 for 22, 107 yards. I know those stats don't look great. But but to be a true freshman. Throwing the passes that he was throwing, man, the dude looked 
he did one move on a fake and spin out and went the other way. It was designed. It looks. It was beautiful. I was like, oh, this dude, he's special. He's going to be special. Mm-hmm. Now, he got a lot in front of him, so I don't know. But, hey, I like this guy. I like I like him. There was a Could whoever recruited imagine, this guy did a great job. Imagine him giving getting a year under Bobby Petrino, just just mentoring him as a young man. Imagine what he'll be, you know, coming out next year playing or whenever. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. If we can keep guys like that, so you remember how Nick Saban? How how is it that he used to be able to keep a stable of of killer quarterbacks? You know. And that's that's the key now. It's hard to keep a, a stack because they want to play right now, and they're gonna take the bread and go play with somebody else. So next year you're having to try to find that. You can't really develop it. Yeah, well, that was before the time of nil. Nil, exactly. Yeah. Now people going to get to the bag. They're not staying around for what you talking about no more. Uh, <laughs> my loser, Matthew Shipley, who was the transfer kicker we got from Hawaii. Boy, Ooh, you talking about super, super trash. Oh, my God. That dude Man. is garbage. He was missing super every day. Trash. Boy, he I don't went, think he made. He went one he for made? three. And oh the one that God. he made, he banked that in. Uh, yeah. <laughs> I was like, <laughs> who this dude is, man? I, I like, know. I mean. He replacing Kev Little? I Dude. I don't know about this. <laughs> I don't know about it at all. He was Respect. terrible. We was like, is the wind blowing that hard? <laughs> right. Hey, I was like, it. every kick looked hard. Like it every did. Every sick, one of them. It was like I, I literally felt bad for him. Like I hope his family not out here. I hate that. Man, mm. I hope they wasn't seen by us because we was really complaining Ooh, about that boy. We was giving. We were talking bad about him. <laughs> <laughs> oh my God. Oh. I'm now, the look good though. Number 90, he got a strong yeah. leg. Yeah. He got that, a strong that leg. That the one that came like in behind him at, when he yeah. missed those first two? Yeah. 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 yeah he, might, he, might, he might he might want him a spot. He might win one. You that feel kicker, <laughs> ooh, man, that boy, big trash. I'm sorry, man. He gonna cost us some games this year. Hey, if it's <laughs> a close South, game, I mean over. I looked at his stats. Go give me number year. 90. He was 14 of 18. I don't like the percentages. I'm just saying, I don't like that. So, yeah, Cam Little probably kicked 50 field goals last year for us. It may have missed one or two. Nah, somebody looked that up for me. No now, that, PATs. No, no, those are my winners. Those are my losers. Hey man, shout out to KJ Jackson, man. He did a good job, man. Shout out to his pops. We met him too. Uh, hmm. uh, I think this was G. These your winners and losers. You got, of course, you got Taylor Green and you got. Jacoby Criswell, man. What, what you think about yeah, so, the man? Okay, so my my winner, of course, you know, I, I wanted to change that that winner, but I, I'll I'll still go with that. Um my I, I let me take another one. I, I'm gonna go with the uh the Quindon Jackson because as Jesus, the run man. What you, how you gonna say Jesus? Oh is uh, yeah, no, oh that's my bad. That's what he did say. Show You're notes, right. man. Show notes. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah. But so this is what I thought between the the, way, the reason why I chose these two is because from the quarterback standpoint, you got a guy that comes into the game in green and gets 22 attempts. He goes 17 for 22. And then you go with Jacoby Criswell, which is my loser, and he only get he goes three of eight. So you're talking about a guy that has less attempts to to showcase himself. It had a lot of uh, when Chris Well was playing. There was a lot of uh, little, I mean, little bitty short routes. Those, those, those were kind of some short routes that he that he got. He didn't nearly get you know much of the playbook. But Green, he was a. The reason why I say that because they gave him probably one or two plays of all the throws. You got the short throw. You got the each level of, of throw over the middle up the uh, hash mark. The, the deep ball, all of those things were able to show coast. He even has a little bit of touch. We've seen a, we've seen a screenplay. So for me, those were my two winners and losers. And like we said about Chris Well, you know, he hit the portal because he ain't going to get no burn. <laughs> None whatsoever. None. 
Uh, I'm going to highlight one of these comments. Cam went 20 for 24. Hey, shout out to Lil Joker, man. Uh, yes, sir. And we got a super chat, so I'm going to go ahead and get DZ on, and then I'm going to read my super chat. So, DZ, I think, yeah, this was you. Winners and losers, DZ. <sighs> Well, this is a little bit of a deeper thing, man. This is from my uh, football savants, man, the people who really got to watch. And um, my winner is Jaquin and Jackson, dog. I think we struck out with the running back. A lot of people were saying, hey, um, he he run too high. He, no, like he, he got a Le'Veon Bell type of running style, and it's beautiful. I love it. He kind of wait for the hole to open up. And then he hit it. And then whenever it's time for him to lower his pads, you going to feel him. So I just love how he keep his legs moving. I love his vision. And I just really like his style of running. Like, he he's he's going to be a really, really good physical back that we need. Because we we really don't need a speed back, even though Dominion looking like he didn't turn his speed up. But I, I just love the way he hit his hoes. I, I love the way that he run in the um, red zone. So yeah, I think Jaquin and Jackson was a, a a easy dub for sure. And then for my loser, I got Isaac Tesla. Now let me explain this. Let me explain why I chose Isaac. That's simply because I don't think about it like this. Isaac Tesla, Andrew Armstrong, and Tyrone Broden all came in together, right? So why did two of those three make a major jump this year and then the last one didn't? Isaac Tesla don't look like he made the improvement Andrew Armstrong and Tyrone Broden did. Andrew, Ar Andrew Armstrong and Tyrone Broden look like brand new receivers this year. I'm literally looking like, wait, did Andrew Armstrong get even faster? Tyrone Broden looked like a whole new guy. He he transformed. He ate himself. So I, I don't know. I, I think... Isaac Tesla just didn't make the jump. The rest of them did. I don't I don't see the special. I really wanted him to be special. When I look at him, he a big physical wide receiver. I expected something amazing, but I just I don't see it. So yeah, I think Isaac Tesla was the loser for me. I liked a lot of wide receivers behind him better than I liked him. All right. So that's DZ. Uh I'm gonna read my super chats here real quick. I got a couple of them. Let's see what we got. Oh, I got one. Hey, the resident statistician, baby. Moon says, in my Q-tip voice, can I kick it? No, we hey. can't. <laughs> <laughs> we may have to go uh, for some extra fourth downs this year. LOL. Ooh. Ooh. Ooh, shots fired, and I'm with it. And that, I don't think that other kickers. I'm looking at the roster, and not, there is not a ninety. Who number ninety was kicking the ball? I want to say. I want to I mean, say that well, looked like number ninety. Well, it's not his number. Who? Anybody not, know who was the other one kicking? Who was the other guy kicking? I can yeah, swear it was ninety. It was. Well, that might be just the jersey he has on, but that's not the one that's on the official roster so far. I'm, yeah. I'm on the the Razorback site. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, but when, that's no big deal. I wonder. It ain't gonna be no big deal be until we miss it. Vito Calvaruzzo. What number was he? Uh, number eighty nine on the roster is a kicker named Vito Calvaruzzo. So I'm okay. guessing maybe that's him. Maybe that was him. I don't know maybe why I just he thought had ninety. Yeah, he did have ninety yeah. on. Yeah, I thought he. Was, I wasn't oh, crazy. Okay. I was like, I know that's number ninety. He may have changed um, his number. It said, yeah, eighty nine, six three one ten. Yeah. Well, hey, if that was you, Vito, good kicking, bro. Well, <laughs> hold on. We're going to need now, you, before, before we go to this next segment, man, I am going to bring Box up. We didn't we didn't have nothing special for Box, but I'm going to come back to this one. I'm going to bring Box up. Uh, what is this? You know what? I, you know, he needs theme music. Box needs theme music. I, you know, I think I'm going to, I'm not going to tell you, nobody what it is, but I'm going to download it for uh, Thursday. Box, you got theme music. I know Box, it, I, I know what it's going to be. You. I appreciate you. And make sure we don't get copyrighted for it, whatever it is. 
Uh, it's not. I mean, it's. it's I mean, a hey, box. Now we we didn't have no, nothing here for you, but we're gonna ask you this question before we move on to this next segment. Who who stood out to you in the spring game? Who was your winner? Who was your loser? One person each side. Don't be giving me five. You know how you like to do. <laughs> I mean, how can you? Even though Green did good, that's expected. Second team offense, second team defense. We don't heard that years and years and years and years and years and years and years. I wait till the Oklahoma State game to get my verdict on him. You can't not go against the running back. That dude was was legit. You talking that about dude, Quentin Jackson, the first team? That, yes, that dude. Yeah, that was my is, pick. That dude's something special. We got lucky with him because some of the moves he was dragging people. I mean, he was getting hit and dragging people for two or three yards. His spin move is off the chain. So what? he spin off T.J. Metcalf, and I was like, "Ooh." <laughs> T.J. Metcalf yeah. thought he had him wrapped up, man. He spin off that boy, so boy scored a touchdown. I was like, so "Ooh, that boy nice." Yeah, that dude right there. He 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 legit on the, on that side. Um, everybody know the kicker suck. Boy, big trash. <laughs> That's it. They better go. They better go into the portal and find them somebody that kicked the ball. One thing we ain't got to worry about is our punter. Nah, the punter nice. That boy was booting that ball. But man, moving on into the into the next segment, man. Um, should TJ Metcalf start, man? I mean, we, he had seven tackles before he went out the game when he was when he when him and Luke Hodge had a collision. Man, he he bring up physicality at that safety yeah. position that we ain't seen in a while. Yeah, well, man. I want to know what y'all think about TJ Metcalf because it looks like he can play both safety positions. What do you think about? I like him. him. I, I like him. Like you say, he he brings a level of physicality to that position, that over the top position that used to make people scared. Even though you can't hit him like you used to, you can definitely have them footsteps. And I think he's a kind of a player that's gonna he gonna lay a lick on somebody that's gonna be a good hit. And um, so I like him at that position. I, I mean, you know, I guess the question is, you know, should he start? I don't know. I, I'd give him a start against UAPB. Why not? Why not give him a start at the first of the game or the first of the season? And let me see what you got. Yeah. DZ, what about you, man? Man, I definitely think, you know, it's this rule when you're a football coach and you got two players that's in similar range as far as talent go. Start the younger guy. I mean, think of the upside we would get if he had a whole year to learn and make his mistakes now. Like like that mistake he made with that hit on um um Luke Haas or Luke Haas. Um he only going to get better. He only going to get better from here on out. And I really liked his tenacity and he's not scared to get physical. Like you can't you can't underrate that in a safety. He ran across the field and tried to hit a tight end twice his size. That's the type of guy I want on my team every single time. That's going to turn the rest of your defense up. So yeah, I'm definitely team Metcalf and that's not just cuz his family kicked it with us this weekend. Yeah, uh I, I I mean, I I ain't saying he should start. Look, I'm saying put him out there. You got to get this boy some playing time, and not just have him sitting on the bench behind Hudson Clark a hundred percent of the time. Because there's some times when we just be like, "Yo, Hudson Clark, why he in the game? Hudson Clark, why he? In why the you game? in the game? Just man to man, put him on the bench." So, and. I've seen some I've seen some physical some physical plays from TJ that I'm like, yo, no no, no disrespect to Hudson Clark, but he can't do that. He ain't gonna run over a 250 pound running back. I don't, Hudson, I ain't never seen Hudson Clark do it. So why in the world is he not gonna get on the field? He gotta get on the field. He needs experience. So you know why. put him out there. Put him out there. What, Box, what uh, you think? Hudson Clark didn't start, so I was happy with that. He wasn't on the first team defense. 
So yeah. I was happy with that. You sure? Yeah, he was. It was no, him and wasn't. Johnson, wasn't it? No, he had he that. Re- he had that red shirt on. He was on. He was. He was playing against the backups. The second. He was playing against the first string. I think you're wrong on that box. I'm gonna have to double check. Let me see. Yeah, double check. I might be wrong, but I thought he wasn't out there because I was happy about that. Yeah, but I, I don't. Tevin, he had a red Tevin shirt Metcalf, on. His arm, I remember. Tevin Metcalf is a dog. That dog got to learn how to tackle with his shoulders. Once he learned that, <laughs> Facts. W- once he learned that, you can't keep him off the field because he's quick, smart, and he'll nail you. I don't know if that. I don't know if that lick with with Hops was just a poor angle because both of them was running at the same time. I don't know if it was a poor angle. He was trying to get him out or what, but he don't mind hitting you, Mm-mm. and he ain't gonna get mm-hmm. beat because he ain't slow. And so I think he needs to start. Why not? Why wait till later? Can't get better unless you play. Facts. Mm-hmm. Facts. Um, <clears throat> yeah, I mean that's that's the that's it on uh, on that. We want we want to see him out there, man. Hopefully he gets some he gets some burn, man. Um, read my super chats. I got a couple more of those. Big man Ross. He says, hey, Daisy, your nephew over here pointing you out. <laughs> Daisy. That's a good look kid, man. He is. Hey, Boss Hog, we got a QB that can hit a 6'7 wide receiver for a touchdown and don't overthrow him. <laughs> man. Yeah, that play to him, to Armstrong in that corner was a beautiful, beautiful throw. Yeah. He made some, you know, we were talking about before that play. Throws. Y'all know we were talking about before that play. The reason I, I think right. that dude, when I seen him, he like a quarterback. Like, dang, <laughs> I sent a picture to somebody else. But I'm still not going to be all hyped till we play Oklahoma State. Yeah. But y'all know what we were talking about before he made that pass. Hold on one Do second, y'all forget? Box. Let me come back to you, Box. I mean, bye bye. I'm going to read my super chat. TJ reminds me of Ryan Clark from my Steelers. Mm. Hey. If he, if, if he reminds you of him, we definitely need to get him on. We need to get him on the field. The wrong one. All right, now box. What was you saying? Do y'all remember what we were down. talking about before he made that touchdown pass to Armstrong? What you brought it up? You brought it up, OD. Why he only looking to his right? Yeah. Oh, he, we were talking about that. Yeah. <clears throat> I, I I peep game that he was only looking to the right. Uh, the entire probably first seven, eight throws. I'm gonna put you. Yep. I'm gonna swap you for DZ in a second. He was only looking for those first few the throws. First, I mean, they reads. was first reads. Yeah. Mm-hmm. <clears throat> uh. So yeah. Uh. But he kind of got out of that and uh, started doing his thing. So I won't hold it against him too bad. Yeah. I think the player that really showed us something to this week, and everybody hyping Green up, that's that's understandable. He did a good job. He played the whole game. KJ Jackson, he played against the first team defense. Yeah, that means more than playing against backups to me. KJ Jackson, it will, will, in a year, that boy gonna be a problem. You yeah. you went in here, but he was he was my winner of the spring game. He was he was my winner. Now since we since we you brought that up, I was disappointed in how they highlighted or lack thereof highlighting Malachi Singleton. He was three. He threw six passes for. He may have had eight, close to a hundred yards. Eighty four yards. yards. 84, 84 yards on three passes. One of them went for 75. He missed one yeah. throw. I don't know what happened on the other two. But they they had him out there with some whack plays from the jump. Yeah. Two handoffs and a swing pass on third and ten. What y'all doing? This is spring game. Why are you throwing a, a, a old buster swing pass? You know it ain't going to go for ten yards. I feel like yeah. they – they 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 don't want to show his, they don't want to show uh, Malachi's skills. And clearly, you saw the skills when he hit that boy 
before he turned around, the ball was dead on him. It was on, on him. him. Yeah, it was it on was him. It's like he yeah. knew exactly. It was like the was dude turned around. Routes. Yeah, on a 20-yard turnaround, and it was on him as soon as he turned around in the right spot. All dude had to do was pivot, and he went for a touchdown. I was like, yeah. ooh. Yeah. I'm, I don't know. I just want to see Malachi Singleton, bro. You know why I, I, I just want to see that? what he got. You know why I think they did that? Why? You know why I think they did that? Because they why? don't want Malachi to show up green. Mm. Hey, shoot the shot, Gene. Yeah. Shoot Ooh. the shot, Gene. Hey, man. I think, too, uh, so you're going to have to have some plays that are going to be to highlight the running back and then some plays to highlight the quarterback. Maybe the – the plays that they were giving these guys were to highlight the the, the running backs, so they're not going to get enough, you know, that burn. Because at some point, if you're trying to give your one a little burn at at running back, of course you're going to hand it off to him. You're going to see what he does over the uh, over the center, how he does on the sweep, how he does on the power run, and so you know that's that may be a you know a, you know a reason why that they didn't get those other opportunities like the freshman did in Green. DZ, what's your thoughts on that? Uh, I definitely agree. I mean, anybody with two eyes that know football. The whole time our group was watching the game, we was like, what? Is this a setup? The, the boy mm -hmm. didn't get a chance. Then they finally gave him a chance, and he hit it on the head. It was it was really ugly work. I'm not going to lie. Like, yeah, I, I, don't, I don't know what coach to blame that on, but uh, – Somebody wanted to protect their money. Now, I'm going to say this. This is no disrespect to Taylor Green. He balled out. He did. But why did K.J. Jackson, a true freshman, get more pass attempts than Malachi Singleton, the projected number two? Think about that. Think about let, let, Let's look at the stats. Malachi Singleton had six passes. K.J. Jackson had 22. 22 to six between your second and third string is crazy. Taylor Green had 22. Uh, to be honest, I, I'm not mad at Jacoby for leaving because them boys had six attempts and eight attempts. So, yeah, uh, Malachi definitely got set up on the whole play calling train. Mm -hmm. Get that boy some shine. They, they don't want a quarterback controversy, so they got to keep the second band down because he might have a chance to beat the starter. That's yeah. the reason they mm. did that. I agree. And Anthony Thomas, man, shout out to you. We, he was out there kicking it with us, man. Shout out to you. Oh, yes, uh, sir, man. He said uh, they don't want a QB controversy. Just, I mean, that's they, facts. They're just trying to go with this guy. But let yeah. me ask y'all something. I know we did uh, the winners and losers of the game, and most of us picked, you know, running backs and what and not. So let me ask you guys something. What, what do you guys really, truly think about this receiving room? Box? Uh, uh, I think, everybody's well, talking about I think everybody's talking about Tesla. Tesla's on the same side of Armstrong. So he's not going to mm -hmm. get all the ball because Green was looking at the other side most of the game. Mm -hmm. I think I think Tesla is the best block on the team. When you're running, you got to have a blocking wide receiver. You can't hear everybody just catch the ball. But I think our, our second team offensive line, I think we're in trouble if our if our starters go out. But our wide uh, receivers, I, I think they're gonna be straight. I like our second team right guard better than our starting right guard. I say that, but everybody else, I can see what you're saying for sure. That second team right guard number fifty, um, he a homegrown kid. He was doing his thing. So uh, anybody outside of that, I feel you. But on the wide receiving core, it's a weird wide receiving core, cause. Uh, Jaden Wilson didn't get no catches. Tesla didn't get no catches. Like, we didn't get to see a lot of people. Isaiah Satania, the dude I wanted to see the most, barely got catches. So, I don't know. Yeah. Uh, it, it, I think the receivers are going to be fine. I and, and I say that because I was in a Discord chat today, and they was talking about a possibility of Broden uh, and Armstrong hitting the portal. Ah, oh, no. And I'm like, they was they was just in our chat the other day, maybe like two, 
two weeks ago. Both was like, that's cap. Bro was yeah. like, I ain't going nowhere. Um, and I'm like, Ugh. but this dude that's in this Discord, he is pumping it. Like, Broden is in the portal. Broden is in the portal. Then he threw Armstrong's name in the portal. I, and I, I I had to reach out to get at, and ask the question. Uh, mm. It was not confirmed that he was not leaving. But, man, I don't think that Armstrong, Andrew is going to leave. I mean, if you really think about it, man, he got a chance to go to the next level. He's clearly the number one receiver here on the hill. Mm-hmm. And Broden looking like number two. Where you going to go at a at a yeah. – and get that division same one. division one SEC. Where mm-hmm. you gonna go? Exactly. I think, under I, under I, that kind of coach, Bobby Petrino, that's gonna gonna be throwing that thing. Yeah, yeah. Just Tyrone like Broden tweet, Tyrone Broden tweeted today. Told him I'm a star. They ain't believe me. He ain't going nowhere. Yeah, yeah. I don't think so either. Yeah. Anybody that had real insight to the program, like we had, knew that that was cap. I mean, yeah. let's let's keep it a buck. Uh, all all camp long, I've been hearing Broden has transformed into a star. We already knew Armstrong was a star. He was a star last season. So, nah, y'all crazy. It's a it's a lot of other receivers I can see that for, but them two especially not. And then I'm glad they proved it Saturday. Yeah, but Manima he brings up a good point. They would jump ship to chase a bigger bag. Mm. Th- that's something to think about though, because. I want you. I mean, if we thinking about this from a money standpoint, from a twenty year, a twenty one, twenty year old standpoint, if I'm making fifty bands from University of Arkansas, but I got another school saying you come over here, I give you two hundred and fifty bands. Who ain't gonna take that? What person in their right mind for one year ain't gonna say I'm going to get this money? I'm gonna say this. I think all the big bags are already gone. I think. I think the the spring transfer is not getting those bags. You getting the smaller bags if you coming in this late. All the big bags are already gone. Everybody got their ones, twos, threes. If you go anywhere right now, you getting a small 10K, 15K bag. And that's not worth leaving Arkansas, in my opinion. Well, unfortunately, we don't know how big their bags is already because I heard some of these weekends. Don't. A lot of them got some big bags. <laughs> so we don't know how big their bag is already. No, we don't. I'm just speculating. Nah, I'm just don't. running my mouth. <clears throat> Just running my mouth on that, but man, mm-hmm. moving on. Uh, Ken and Ray, Ken and Ray, man, Ken Ray. good to come kick it with you. Yeah, Ken and Ray, you need to pull up, man. You always you you in the chat game. We want you to pull up. I man. know, right? We gonna we're gonna <laughs> open it up in the, to the uh, hall pin here in a second. Just want to go over this real quick. Uh, uh, Isaiah Augusta, Jer- Jacoby Criswell, they hit the portal. We don't know who's going to be right behind them. Uh, <laughs> but we'll probably see qu- quite a few of them hit the portal, man. So we'll see. Think going uh, next? Who y'all think going next? Uh, I uh, think we lose a, a wide receiver next. Uh, we had some young guys with some promise in the back. I, to be honest, I thought Davion Dozier was going to leave. But with him breaking his wrist, he can't go nowhere. So I, I don't know. Um, I had a great conversation this weekend. Um, Ty Washington. Um, I I would love to talk to Ty Washington, but if you think about this guy, he had he had thirty D one schools offer him a scholarship, and he chose the University of Arkansas. And we saw what he could do in two games when Tesla went down. And he's still been hurt. He ain't fully recovered. But this guy has the potential to play on the next level. Now, in that conversation that I had, he he loves Arkansas. He likes it here. Uh, he about to be finished with his, his degree. This is his third year up there on the hill. After this year, he's going to be finished. But just to, just imagine, I got my paperwork. I got two years of eligibility to play football. Why am I going to stay? Now, he may stay this year, but if he don't get on the field, you can bet your bottom dollar 
I'm leaving next year. And we will never see the kind of potential potential player that he is because we mm-hmm. never saw him get on the field. But that's how fragile success is in in football. Yeah. That's how fragile it is, really. Because an injury like that set him back a year. And then, you know, just things happen. So that's what I mean, that's truly how fragile making it through high school, college, and into the NFL to actually try to provide for your family. Man, that's that it's rare. It's rare to be able to do that. So, I mean, he may be one of those he may be one of those uh cases. You just never know. Hey, Absolutely. Out. What did what do y'all what I mean, I try to tell y'all what y'all think about the linebackers now? Um, I like uh, uh, Carson Dean. That stop that he made on the goal line was crazy. I mean, the dude was at the one yard line. He caught that ball, and Carson Dean hit that boy, and he didn't move another inch. I was like, "Ooh, we this dude might be special." Uh, sorry. Mm-hmm. Was all over the place. Uh, Spence, that's a dog. That's a dog. Anything outside those three, I'm like, I, I don't know. I don't know. I gotta see it. I gotta see it because they all we right. don't know. We ain't got no tape on them. Mm-hmm. That's the luck of the draw on them. I mean, they gonna have to get some uh, experience one way or the other. You got to get some game time experience. So. Why not let them play in these games like UAP, uh, PB, and let them develop a little bit? Because you might need them. Yeah. I agree. I agree. Now, before we before we jump hey, over into our... Hey, I'm going to add Alex Sanford to that. My bad. I had to um, check and make sure he was number 20. Uh, we got Alex Sanford was the only other linebacker. Uh, go back and watch the tape. Uh, it was a goal line stand. I think we was on like the five offensively. And he was uh, on the second team D going against the first team. And he stopped Jaquindon Jackson by himself, basically, with a big hit. I think outside of those four linebackers, give me um, Spence, Sorry first, and then to back them up, Carson Dean and Alex Sanford, because he ain't scared to take no licks. But outside of that, we have literally nobody. It's, it's nothing. So it's thin. <laughs> but, but that's all you need unless somebody get hurt. Because you can play with a But linebackers anyway. get hurt more than – yeah, that's true. But linebackers get hurt more than anybody. They're hitting every play. So somebody going to get hurt. Yeah, at some point. Yeah. Absolutely. Uh, I'm going to read this chat, re- this uh, message here by Sam Jones. Uh, G, check your messages real quick. Uh, Sam Jones says, Bobby P plays the best player, not who he likes. If you can't get on the field with him, then you d- – then – that's your bad. You're either not the best at your position or can't learn the playbook. Facts. Absolutely. 100% facts. Now, before we open it up to the hog pen, we got to shout out our sponsors before we move forward. G, can you handle that for me? Yes, sir. What we like to do is for you guys to experience peace of mind with Insurance Max. These guys are your one-stop shop to home, auto, and commercial insurance, and we're talking about all over the state. So don't wait. Call today for a free, no obligation quote. Secure your future with Insurance Max. It's where protection meet affordability. So you can give Caleb, Wes, or Sandy a call, and you can start to safeguard what matters to you the most. That number is 870-534-2823. Again, that number is 870 534 Two eight two three, and you know we always got to show love to the OGs of the Woo Pig Podcast. That's Three M Electric. These guys are serving Northwest Arkansas, and they do both commercial and electrical contracting. They are an SD VOSB. Now, what is that? That is a service disabled veteran owned small business. These guys are both de- reliable and dependable, and no job is too big or too small. So when it comes to all of your electrical needs, you give 3M Electric a call. That number, 479-408-9865. Again, that number is 
And when you talk to them, tell them that you heard it on the Woo Pig Podcast. Oh, 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 my God. Yeah, yeah. Now, now let's let's get into it. Uh, we got the hog pen ready to come up here and kick it with us. Uh, let's see who we got in the building. We're going to move uh, DZ off. And I think we got we got Tonka Todd in the building. We, even though we're looking at the ceiling fan, Tonka Todd. <laughs> Tonka, Tonka Todd. <laughs> we gonna lead, we gonna lead Tonka up. I'm gonna keep looking at him before and see if he'll come back. But in the meantime, we gonna we gonna keep Tonka Todd off the screen. Uh, so while we waiting on somebody to come up and kick it with us, the link is in the comments. I'm gonna throw it up there one more time. Uh, we we picked up a recruit in uh, basketball from Kentucky, that big seven two center. What what was his name, G? They just call him Big Z because I ain't gonna. I I mean, come on, man. I it's Big Z seven two. Yeah, we just gonna call him that. Okay, all right. Uh, Big Z seven two five. Go ahead. Yeah, five point five points uh, a game, uh, three point five rebounds a game, one point five blocks, thirty eight percent from the free throw line. He actually kind of plays the stretch five, so he's kind of like that hybrid guy, kind of like a Chet Holmgren type that can play the four or the five, but he's kind of narrow four to five. You know what I'm saying? So uh, he had some pretty big games last year. He had a game, you know, uh, several games in double digits. So, I think he's going to be a good guy. I don't think Calipari going to he, – he, he ain't recruit no scrubs. Yeah. Yeah, he I agree with that. He didn't start playing in January. Who? He can? He, he didn't get eligible to January. Mm-hmm. Oh, okay. Oh, oh, okay. Yeah, I see what you're talking about. Yeah. Hey, we got Tonka Todd in the building representing 3M Electric with the hat. Hey, Tonka, <laughs> who is your winner? Who is your loser uh, this weekend? My winner, hands down, has got to be Kobe Braunham. I believe that's how you pronounce his last name. Number 50 on the offensive line, freshman from Fort Smith, Southside. The guy was going up against the first-team defense, and granted, it's Arkansas's first-team defense, but he was getting pushed. His pass pro was good. He was getting hits on the second level. He was doing everything you want your guards to do. He was doing. So he's my winner, and my loser is just the kicking game. Punting, yeah. I think, will be okay, but those those that one kicker, God, God bless him. God bless him real hard. <laughs> real hard. <laughs> real hard. <laughs> oh man, that's hilarious, man. Hey, Tonka, let me ask you this, man. What what did you think about the offensive line? As a whole, I think they have improved dramatically. Uh, The only the only question mark I have on the starting five is at right guard, and that's that's uh, Josh Braun. I don't think he needs to be the starting right guard. He was getting pushed around all game. He was the reason for uh, one of the sacks. Otherwise, overall, we, I think we have an NFL caliber left tackle for the first time in, what, 20-something years? Mm. And that's, 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 that's good to hear. That's good to hear. Because uh, that line last year was atrocious. And if, if all you see that, that we need to do is sure up one, one spot, hey, that may be that may be something special. But I think I think what would fix this offensive line is if they can get that center uh that that's hit the portal. I can't remember his name now. This it's the guy that that's from SMU. If uh, Hickman is his last name. If they can if they can sign Hickman, then all offensive issues are fixed instantly. Okay. Gotcha. Now now Tonka, what did you think about Quarterback play. What did you think about Taylor Green? What's your thoughts? 
Well, when I first started watching Taylor Green in, in the practice film, the one thing that I will say that, that, that amazed me above everything else and it shocked me was his ball placement, either on the move or from the pocket. His ball placement is next level good, um, which means he can, he can pick you apart from the pocket or he can pick you apart on the run. And when a quarterback can do that, there, there's not really a defense against that because if you start show, uh, cheating, putting eight in the box to try to contain a mobile quarterback, and all of a sudden he starts dropping dimes on your head, you know, you, there's there's no defense against that. So I, I think he is absolutely the number one starter. Um, the guy that most shocked me was K.J. Jackson. He played like a little tailing green out there with that arm. Uh, yes, he had that one interception, but that technically wasn't his fault, so don't put that on him. Um, the single, Singleton, I think he has the best up, upside as far as arm talent goes. The only knock against him is that he's a shorter quarterback, and when you're dealing with the shorter quarterback, that means the offensive line has to open up passing windows for you to throw to because you're too short to see over the line to throw to anybody. And that gives advantage to defense. So, you know, you'd have to roll him out quite a bit and keep him on the move. And I don't know how well he can throw on the move. Well, if you look at his high school tape, he's he's a dual threat quarterback. He can actually run. He ain't running fast as Taylor Green, but he can run. So you got to check out his high his actually high school tape, uh, and you'll you'll see. Exactly what uh what we're talking about. Uh let's see here. Who else stood out to you, um, uh, Box? Um Honestly, I think Ball. Cam Ball? Cameron Ball. I think he did good the, yesterday. And I think he finally coming into his own. And that we we need that. We need that defensive tackle to just be a defensive tackle for us to con- help neutralize the linemen off the off the linebackers. Because you got good defensive linemen, that means the linebackers is more free to roam. And our line and our linebackers was roaming kind of free yesterday. So that means our defensive line was doing their job. Hmm. I mean, sorry. To- I mean, yes, sir. <laughs> Your days <laughs> running together. All right, give me a second here. I got a. We got Jimmy Fly Hookem in the building. Jimmy Fly. Hook man, he got the best name on here, man. Jimmy Fly Hookem. What's going on, Jimmy Fly? <laughs> what up, man, baby? What's going on, people? How y'all doing? Man, we, we good, good. We bro. good. So, man, the, the question we asking everybody, man: Who your winner? Who your loser? Oh, uh, let's see. I'm gonna go with the winner. Being KJ Jackson, the obvious choice is green, but I'm gonna give Jackson some more love. Uh, the loser, probably a tie for Singleton and Tesla. Oh, mm. so so why why Singleton? Uh, I mean the talent's there. I think Bobby P has a, a stereotypical quarterback in his mind that he likes to see. Uh, so you got a lot of you know the certain play calls for certain players that y'all was talking about earlier where you see you see a certain level of talent which you don't see from other players so i think he lost because he didn't get a chance to show his full his full bag you know tesla mm. he just seems to be the odd man out you know i respect his run blocking he's very physical um his speed really ain't there he doesn't get much separation and that's that's a lot of his problem uh, if the ball gets in his radius though He'll come down with it, but in Bobby P mm. offense, you got to get separation. Mm. I like that. So, uh, what else is it that you know stood out to you uh, at the spring game? The linebacker core definitely stood out. I was I was loving to see them young fellas flying around. Uh, I do question the depth behind them. So, hopefully, whatever defense, I don't know what defense sets we're going to be running. But if we don't have to put three on the field at a time, that'll be great. Uh, mm. Just to make sure we don't lose any depth there. Uh, some other things I noticed was Metcalf was good. He was definitely flying around to the ball. He's going to have to tighten up on his technique. 
you know, screw mm-hmm. up and wrap up a little bit. He throw he throws his body around, kind of reminiscent of Jaden Catalan. And so if he don't want to have a lot of injuries in his career, he's going to want to tighten it up. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's what we're mm-hmm. talking about is, is, is working on his technique a little bit. Uh, he has yep. the right type of aggression, uh, you know, to play that position. You know what I'm saying? Because mm-hmm. we want somebody that – I mean, you need somebody – in that in that position to be able to be physical and not scared to take a lick and give one. So, because oh, sometimes yeah. you're gonna, because sometimes you're gonna lose. In order to you know to get a good one, you're gonna have to give up some. Sometimes ain't nobody ain't never got their bell wrong. You know, I I don't know none of them that played the position. So I like his yeah. toughness. You know that play. You know uh, that he made. I mean, it was it was a good play, but I mean, it was just a little bit of a uh, kind of sloppy technique. And just to kind of like, just to tie that tie that knot up. But the thing is, it's like it's an easy fix. It's not like it's something that's not coachable. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. It's it's like they get in the in the film room, show him where he went wrong. Get hey, this is a bigger guy. You got to hit him this type of way compared to hitting somebody more your size. You know, as a, as a young man coming in the game that early, he's not thinking about all that. He just thinking make the play. You know, but once they get that in his head, where to where to hit the bigger body people at to take him down and wrap up and be technical on his technically sound. Mm-hmm. On those tackles, he would be a lot better, man. But like, I think I think it was you, G. Holmes, that said uh, either you or Box, and said he got to get the reps, though. You know, so we all love. Mm. Uh, well, excuse me, let me take that back. We don't all love Clark or Hudson. <laughs> I, 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 hey, I ain't gonna lie, man. I, 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 I'm right there. <laughs> I'm right there with y'all. But at the same time, I, I do respect the man IQ. You know, what I'm saying I, I respect how he is in the right place at the right time, and more often than not. You know, we hate on him. Like that, I think that Florida game where he got used and abused two plays back to back for that touchdown. Yeah, um, them jumps hurt. But it, 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 you know, that's that's where his lack of athleticism shows up. Uh, but it also, you know, I think it was a wise move to put him at safety just to, so he wouldn't be that much of a liability. But I say you get him over with Metcalf, let him get some of that tutelage, and shoot, man, we, we go and escort the new era and. Move on out the old era. You know, Hudson, you didn't got your degree. You had your time. You made some good plays for us. You had the three interceptions in the game. You know, that really kind of, you know, cemented your, leg- your legacy here at Arkansas because you didn't really been much since then other than, you know, right there at the right time or getting smushed on the other end of a stiff form. But anyway, <laughs> I'm going to get off the hood for a second. But, you know, I, I think I think you, you got to get Metcalf and reps. That's all I'm saying. I, I agree with that. And, I agree with that 100%. And, mm-hmm. Before I'm gonna grab a beer on that note. Before we uh, move on, I'm gonna read my super chat. Feel move. I feel for live. I mean, I can't. What is that? He always in the com. He always watches the videos after the fact. Uh, he always definitely watches them because he always uh, comments. But man, we appreciate your super chatting. He says, "I love you, brothers. Keep it going." Man, we appreciate you. Man, we appreciate you. I'll give you a horn for that one. Hey, yo, OD. Yes, sir. You got uh, Deezy's empty chair sitting up there. Do I? I thought that was Bob. Yeah. Okay. No. I'm going to fix that in a minute. Uh, I am going to bring five here. Now, that is Deezy, ain't it? Uh, <laughs> get box I here, said box. Bad. Uh, I said box where you at? <laughs> <laughs> hey. I got, I, I, I got uh, Scout King Refugee on the line, man. He said Uh-oh. I want to get a... I want to get in on this football conversation. Scout King. Oh, man. We want to know who your winner and who your loser was in the spring game. I'm going to go home and say, i say Taylor Green and uh, and the running back. All right. Jackson. Okay. Why do, why do, your, why do your winners? Easy, quick. I mean, you can you can see you can instantly see the flash that they they go that they that they gonna bring to the game every Saturday. If uh, as long as they ain't hurt, they gonna bring it. Yeah, that, and that's part of what we need anyway. We need we need somebody that's gonna bring it. You know what I'm saying? Attack. That's mm-hmm. what we need. Play in and play out. Yeah. So who who was your loser? I ain't got no loser, really, man. To be honest, I ain't got no loser because it ain't even worth talking about. Well, I, I take that back. I take that back. My losers, man, I didn't know until y'all said something about it. We losing a gust day. And uh, 
and we might be we might be losing uh Singleton, man, cause uh and I wouldn't blame it wouldn't shock me if uh Augusta and and Chris will go to Arkansas State and what you call go go down there with uh Gus Malice, um uh Malachi. I'm gonna tell you this, Singleton ain't leaving. Hundred percent Sing- Singleton ain't leaving. So that's that's not gonna happen. Uh, Isaiah got a better chance of landing at a much bigger school than A State. All he really got to do is go down and talk to uh, TCU. They probably got a spot for him. The guy that we, that decommitted from us from St. Louis just got an offer uh, to Alabama. So, hey, running backs are in demand. But in the spring game, Isaiah was. And he didn't run the ball good. He was running side to side. I was like, "What is this dude doing?" So, well, they, uh, they, they, they I, go ahead, Tonk. Oh, well, they, they were running a lot of stretch plays. Time. Yeah, yeah. They, 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 they were running a lot of stretch plays, and whenever Augustov, who is not a stretch guy, whenever the cutback lane was there. He there was hesitation, there was confusion in his eyes and on his face. It was like he 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 couldn't quite comprehend what he, what Bobby P wanted him to do in that offense. Yeah. Hey, I want to say this: anybody that get on here and say anybody was the worst besides the kickers, you super trash. Just <laughs> put it out. There. Amen to that. Trash. Your worst, your, your worst shouldn't be nobody but the kickers. For you to put anybody else over them, <laughs> you super trash. Yeah. Super yeah. trash. <laughs> yeah. Damn, Box, I feel attacked, bro. I'm catching straight hey. bullets and things. What's going on, man? Hey. You know? <laughs> hey, hey, you, 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 hey, you, you my guy? But that was super trash take on who you're with. <laughs> man, y'all had already said it like several times. I didn't want to beat the dead horse, man. But I guess you yeah, wanted me to beat, beat the dead, dead horse. horse. <laughs> beat that, that dead horse needs to be beat. Beat that dead horse. <laughs> <laughs> they, went and, yeah. hey, they went and got that dude and brought him here for that. Yeah. Yeah. My man had. Hey, hey, his only oh, kick oh, was a ricochet. His only kick was a ricochet in. Yeah, it was terrible. Yeah, you spitting facts, man. You spitting facts. Yeah. Hey, Mama Armstrong, you missed a lot. You got to go back and watch it. We not that, that's we, Mama Metcalf. I'm sorry, Mama Metcalf. That's what I meant. You, we did a whole whole little situation on uh, TJ, so you got to go back and check that out. So you oh, missed yeah, a lot on did. this one. Yeah. yeah Clint Williams says August Augusta ain't going to no A State. Facts. Not he not. Chance. Nah. Sam Jones. My winner was Braylon Russell. In my loser, Scott Fountain's employment. Ooh, that Fountain? shot's fired right there. Who was Scott Fountain? I'm 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 lost with that. Special teams. Special teams coach. Special teams oh. coach. Special teams. Oh yeah. Uh, yeah. Hey, you know what? He 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 been kind of standing on a, on one leg for a couple of years anyway. That, he might have he gonna mess around and write and write his own history on this one. You know what I'm saying? But he you ain't think Cam, Cam Little might saved him for a year or so, right? Cam Little was born, Cam Little. <laughs> <laughs> hey, let's you know see, what? Let's I ain't going to argue with you. He came in kicking go. that ball. Hey, let's see how kicker go five for 12 this year for field goals, but we have six touchdowns for um, kickoff returns and three punt returns. Do you fire him? Hell no. <laughs> we haven't got to that point yet, so you really can't say it's his fault yet. We I mean, yeah. That what that dude tape look like, though? That's what I want to know. Who? What's his stats from where he came from? The dude that we brought in. What? I, I don't know. But I'm, I'm asking. What was his stats and numbers from where he came from? Well, from what I maybe he ain't, seen, maybe he ain't big like ready. Maybe he been eating too he much catfish hole and got fat. <laughs> or he ain't ready for the lights. <laughs> Who y'all talking about? Chriswell. That that kicker. The kicker. Oh, man. Well, we, well, that ain't even no discussion. He gonna he gonna cost us some games if he out there kicking the ball. He, I'm sorry, yeah. man. It it was horrible. I was like, this dude missed every freaking field goal. It was bad. It was bad. 
Terrible. It was real bad. Now, hey, so I want to I want to move the conversation forward, man. Um, what would you guys like to see shored up when football comes back? Because football is pretty much done. What 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 would you guys like to see shored up? I'm a, I'm gonna come to Scout King first. See you on the phone. Wait a minute, you said you football is done? Yeah, it's pretty much done, man. No more football right now. Spring game is no it. More fo- oh, okay, okay. I yeah, see there ain't no more football for a while. Uh, I'm gonna go to Scout King first. What do you What do you want to see shored up before the season starts? Uh, for the team overall. Yeah. Talking about you no know, after the transfer portal get who go leave who coming in yeah uh, I take uh I have to take some more offensive linemen and a D line and uh I probably take uh I take I I pretty much go with office offensive linemen D linemen I probably take another linebacker. I ma- I kind of max it out, maximize it out with defense and the you know, O line. I mean the defensive line, offensive line, and maybe a linebacker. Maybe uh, like you say, it's just coordinate. You lose a receiver, bring in a, a, a stud receiver if it's one out there. Uh, stud DB, uh, you know, a safety that's out there. Kind of level it out, man. Like I said, we gonna need them dogs up front, man. That's just the bottom line to the whole picture. We're going to need somebody to really be dogs on our offensive line and defensive line for us to even attempt to go somewhere. Okay. So you saying so you saying we need a whole team? <laughs> <laughs> Everybody. <laughs> now, uh, Tonka, what about you? I think I think we need more depth at defensive tackle. I think we need at least two more linebackers and at least one more safety on the defense to shore it up. Offensively, we need centers and some more depth at guard and definitely depth at tackle. Otherwise, I think I think Arkansas is okay. Box defensive tackle, nose tackle, offensive lineman. Everything, I don't, everything other work itself out. And Jimmy Fly. They already said it. Depth on the O line, D line, linebackers. I like to see safety be solidified, and then we should be good. G. I say the same thing. I think we need a little bit of more depth at the offensive line. Decent, the defensive ends, I think we need to shear that up a little bit. I think the offense will take care of itself because we have the right pieces. Depending on what we what the people that stay, I think Bobby Petrino will be able to pull them together and then go uh, find what, he, what else he needs to plug those holes. Uh, me personally, I would like to see them go get a linebacker um, just because I feel like we need more experience. Uh, I definitely would like to see another linebacker. Um, and with this team, you can never have better offensive linemen. So, them are my two spots that I would like to see shored up. Um, so, that's that's it for me. Uh, before we move on to the next topic, I got – I'm going to read this super chat. Mama Armstrong hit us up. Thank you for supporting the channel. She says, they had a survey for y'all podcast. I said, yes, it's useful. Then they said, why with choices? I said, uh, it's informative and entertaining. Hey. <laughs> yes, hey, sir. thank you. Thank you, Mama Armstrong. Appreciate it. Yeah, absolutely. Where was this survey at? That's what I want to know. I, I know, right? We didn't get I no didn't survey. Get I want to know where the survey came from. Where was it at? <laughs> it was probably on YouTube before she before they sent it to the video. They do those surveys. Oh, is that what she get? Uh. Is that where it came from? Mm-hmm. I, I want to know where it yeah. came from. It, okay, it it, right. it 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 comes from your your uh, recommended news feeds. They'll do that sometimes. They'll send up something and then they'll say, "Was this recommendation useful?" Yeah. So I'm I'm gonna take a look at a couple of these comments real quick. 
Brody Farrell says another difference maker at wide receiver would go a long way for depth and change of pace. A bigger linebacker helps plus two offensive linemen, a cornerback because Stewart shouldn't play too. He too great. Yeah, he is way grabby. Stewart is number 16, right? Can anybody confirm that for me? I can. Hang on. If it is number 16, uh man, he he kind of suspect out here on I mean he he uh had a horse collar tackle against uh Jaquindon Jackson. I'm like, bro, this practice. What are, what you doing? That was that was a blade. Yeah, horse six, sixteen is Miguel Mitchell. Miguel Mitchell. Hey, that dude gonna cost us. I hope he don't get on the field too much. Cause he gonna be he gonna cost us. You don't horse tackle your starting running back. Exactly. In a spring game. Yeah, I'm like, yeah, I don't know geez. what he was thinking. Yeah. He might be cut anyway doing stuff like that. That get rid of. <laughs> yeah. He, he probably was like, mm-hmm. hey, bro, you out here tripping. Um, bro, Stevie Wonder could have seen that horse. Ta- that, that horse. Yeah. It, it, was, it was it bad. Was there. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. She said it was under the video. Hey, so I got a question to y'all, man. And I ain't, I ain't trying to dump on the young man, but I kind of want to talk about that, that group of people. That was out there. One here is on the screen. We ain't gonna call no names. Put Chris Well in the game. Put Chris Well in the game. I don't knock the man for leaving because he should have left because he was never gonna play here with this mm. offense. Where where do you guys see Chris Well going from here, man? Mm. Talk. I think he go to UCA or Arkansas State. Well, I, I seriously think Criswell has the ability that he could probably go somewhere like an Auburn or somewhere like a Missouri where they're needing a quarterback. I could see him seriously going to Missouri. I could see Augustal following him too because Missouri also needs running backs. Uh, hmm. Missouri did. I thought their quarterback came back. You said they need backup because I don't really watch Missouri's Tiger sports, so I don't know what they got. Yeah, they're they're uh, Bra- Brady, I believe, is gone, and they have they have this freshman guy that's supposed to be the next great thing, but nobody's really talking about him much up there in Columbus. So there's questions of Missouri and quarterback play. Griswell would solve that problem. Okay. Huh. Box, what about you? I think he go to Arkansas State. You don't see too many. You don't see too many Arkansas kids go out of state, come to Arkansas, then leave state again. Yeah. No. True. Augusta, Augusta, yeah, he ain't from Arkansas. He gonna go anywhere, but I can see Criswell going to Arkansas State and starting. Jimmy Fly. Uh, to me, man, I think uh, if he gets put in the right offense, unfortunately, he's not taught him to be a true pocket passer. So he'll have to go somewhere that's going to be able to allow him to throw a little bit on the move and create windows for him. Uh, so, I mean, if he goes to the right offense, he could go to another D1 school. However, I'm with everybody. I'm, I think he's going to end up at like a Arkansas State type of school. Hopefully not UCA because my little cousin just went on there as a freshman. So we don't need no more. We don't need no more. <laughs> S, nobody else in the, in the QB room. <laughs> but uh, I think he'll land somewhere like Arkansas State. He a, he a hometown kid. I'm with Box. You don't you don't transfer back to the state. You know, and then leave again, unless a better opportunity with some NIL happens to come and the right quarterback room opens up. G, what about you? Man, I don't think he's going to get no burn here. I mean, it's sad to say that. In so, Arkansas, period? I mean, not on the hill. Well, he already, tra- he already, he gone. He already, transferred. that's what I'm saying. That's what I mean. So you saying where he going to land? That's what I'm saying. Yeah. Since he ain't gonna get no burn up here, he he understood that. Is what I'm saying. So I I don't really know. It, everybody wanted to see it, wanted to see it, and maybe there's something that we don't know. I don't know. He may have some type of flaw. I don't know, and it may not necessarily be, uh, you know, on the field. I don't know. It just seems kind of strange that this guy is supposed to be this talented and no, and he didn't get no kind of burn. It, it just I don't understand that. So maybe he goes somewhere else and, and, and does a good job, but maybe he doesn't. 
I will be interested to see where he goes, though. So I, I'm I'm kind of up in the air on that one. Let me say something real hey. quick, man. The, the, the reason why he, he don't get that much burn is, is, is because of the rotation. You know, you got a certain amount of people that got a certain amount of time to be at the school, right? He's already looking at one more year of eligibility. You got Singleton that's been a couple of years. He's been contemplating on transfer because he have not been getting clocked. And you got a promising freshman coming in. He's really just the odd man out. When you talk about the plays being called, it's like they're not going to – for certain people, they're not going to showcase your talent and have you set up to go to a rival school and things of that nature. They're only going to call plays that's going to showcase so much. So for Criswell, unfortunately, it's just bad timing. You know, it's another new offensive coordinator. He transferred in. We got promising freshman Singleton. He's putting up the numbers and showing that he's worthy. Then you got the guy that they guaranteed the starting job, you know, coming in. So he's really just not the guy that they chose, unfortunately. Well, I'm, uh, I'm going to say this. And what you said is not true because what we heard, we know why Criswell didn't get no burn and he leaving. And I ain't got nothing to do. He's the odd man out. Why is that then? Quizwell couldn't learn the offense. Mm. I didn't hear that. Where y'all hear that from? That was your guy last year, though, Vox. It was my guy because I didn't want to burn Singleton out his red shirt year. But as soon as the year was over with, I started getting on Singleton. Why burn Singleton red shirt year up when KJ is going to play all the time? Mm-hmm. Yeah, I agree with that. So, so, hey, uh, so Chriswell did it to himself. <laughs> he did it to himself. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Hey, I mean, we, so come we had some come conversations. To, I, I mean, respect it. it. Yeah, he couldn't like. I mean, I think he didn't know they did some uh, pre testing on the uh, playbook, and he he failed that, and he was out of shape. Yeah. Oh, hey, so Scout go, King, yeah. Scout King, what 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 do you think yeah. the good landing spot is for Jacoby Criswell? Yeah, I I think he needs to go to uh, Arkansas State. Uh, well, don't get him two years on this belt over there. And uh, he get his redemption next year when we play him, play against Arkansas State. He can show y'all, show us what what he all about. That if I was him, that's what I would do. I may I go, I'm going to Arkansas State, and uh, I try to tell Augusta to go on with me. You, we'll run rush out in that conference. It don't matter what conference you play in now, no more. Whether you're a quarterback or running back, if you got it, they're gonna find you anyway. You know what I'm saying? So, if I was them too, I'd go over there. So, we finna run it. We finna run it in that conference. It don't matter. You ain't necessarily got to come out the SEC uh, or the ACC, uh, the Big 12, the, uh, either the Pac-12 to be a dominant player to go to the league. So, none of that. It really don't really matter. You know what I'm saying? If he go, both of them went to Arkansas State, in my mind. Yeah. All right. If you're a player, you're a player. Well, we'll see where he's going to ha- end up. I like Anthony Thomas' thought, though. Chris Well, the UAPB, and then he gets a chance to upset nah, the Razorbacks, nah, man. Nah. <laughs> he's drinking. We'll take him to Arkansas State. Uh, hey, Ant. <laughs> hey, Ant. Hey, Ant. Hey, Ant. You drinking too much tonight, bro. That ain't going to never happen. <laughs> hey, man. Shout out to uh, Kyle Scout Report, man. Thank you for coming in and kicking it with us. He also came up. And kicked it with us uh, up on the hill this weekend, man. It was good meeting you. He said, if Chriswell came to Arkansas right out of high school, would he have been having this problem? Yes. I'm going to nope. say yes. I don't think so. No, he wouldn't. KJ was there. No, he wouldn't. They wouldn't have, they wouldn't have drafted KJ. No, that don't mean nothing. If that's the case, I mean, to Box Point, though, now yeah. that I got this information, if he wasn't able to learn the offense there, uh-huh. you got to wonder why he didn't get on the field in North Carolina. So maybe he didn't learn the offense KJ, there either. KJ can't learn the offense either. That's when they got to one, one, give him one play and that's it. <laughs> Look, I don't want to open up that, that book back up. I had a whole chapter on KJ. Hey. Yeah, all yeah. his flaws. Yeah. Oh, yeah. We, we done talking about KJ. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. We, we Go done talking about him. Go ahead, Scout King. All right, check this out, y'all. All right, this is what we would have had in 2020, because that's when Chris Well would have been a freshman. Because uh, when Pippen got the job, the first place he went to was down there to Morton, 
to see Chris well. He's, that's documented and said. We would have had a true freshman at Chris well. We'd have had a red shirt freshman and KJ, I mean KJ Jefferson. And they probably would have still brought in uh Felipe. That's what we'd have been dealt with right there. So we'd have got at least two years of a battle with KJ and uh and uh Criswell on the our brow, I mean uh, Kendall Brown, and we would have See, one thing about when you come out of high school with these players, just like how we lost their offense to tackle, see, after you get shifted around so much or whatever, you the, the players become fragile. See what I'm saying? And that's what happened to that offensive alignment that we lost. We threw him out there. He wasn't ready to go. He thought he was, but he wasn't ready to go. So he shell shot. So Chris Will career is shell shot. See what I'm saying? So, but that don't mean it's lost. Like I say, if he listen to the night, go to Arkansas State, take them job, take that job over there, pay them for two years, and then see what you can do in a combine, a draft coming up in 26. Mm-hmm. Okay. I, I, I like that. Tonka Ty, we're going to come to you next. Uh, I am going to read a super chat here. Matt, thank you for supporting the channel, man. We appreciate your patience. I mean, for your patience on this uh, super chat. He said the SEC has rules now that won't let you transfer to another SEC team without having to sit out. Mm. I ain't know that. I didn't know that. Sin- mm. Sinister. Hey, sinister. Uh, the rule on that. The the yeah. What's, uh, yeah, what's the ruling on that? Yeah, sinister. Yeah. Uh, let me jump back over here. We're going to go to a Tonka. Same question to you. If Chris Well had came to Arkansas right out of high school, would it have been a problem? I don't think so. Why? Well, Chris Well, this is the same guy that pushed a guy named Mays at North Carolina for the starting job, and that's why he transferred to Arkansas. So the kid clearly had talent. I think if that kind of talent would have came to Arkansas, I don't think we would have had quite the turnover at offensive coordinator the way it went down, if that makes any sense to you. I don't think Enos would be brought in because I I think Criswell beats out KJ nine out of ten times because Criswell has got better arm strength, he's just as athletic, and he's a better quarterback. So no, I, I don't. I, I don't think it would have. I, I think it would be KJ transferring out right now. He he also is behind me at Burger King, ordering three whoppers because the boy he mad out of shape out here. He out here looking like me out mm-hmm. here, bro. Come on, he got to lose some weight. You he the boy. How you gonna expect to compete when you ain't in shape? Well, if, if, right. if he's on the quarter pounder diet, then maybe he might need to look at playing tight end or, uh, uh, hey, may, maybe he's trying to fill a gap at offensive tackle. Who knows? <laughs> Man, when he was running Saturday, my knees was hurting. <laughs> Yo. Did I just tell you? I just told you. I was talking about the man that gained weight. I told you, man, his career has been shocked. Shell shocked. Dude probably is kind of depressed right now. So that's why I say, if somebody that really really looking out for that kid's best interest, they you know to let them make them pop back, they just tell us, that, man, go on over to Arkansas State, lose trim up over the summer. He young. He can knock off that little 20 pounds or whatever he did put on. And, uh, Man, go on and take that job over for the next two years at Arkansas State because they'll love to have it. They'll love it. And a good state. See, you know what I'm saying? Cause I think we're going to miss out on some on that guy. Wherever he lands, I think we're going to hear about him. Well, I mean, if they do, a, then. A good state, I, I believe we're going to hear about them down the line. If he, hey, hey just, just like phone. Alvin, uh, my boy Drago from Rocky Four. If he dies, he dies. Dies with Dunya. Hey, it's over. He ain't here no more. Hey, now, that transfer stuff is n- inaccurate, too. That's yeah, somebody else just put that up here. 
Um, I mean, Poo Paul Clint. went to Ole Miss, and we just got sore. How is that accurate? Yeah, it don't. Well, don't, well, don't. actually, how 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 all that works is 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 like this. There's two different windows that you can hit the portal out of. The first window, which is how we got Sori and all those cats, and that's when Poo Paul left. Right, was before the spring. After the spring, you can't transfer from SEC to SEC school after the spring game without sitting out a year, unless you're a graduate transfer. Yeah. Hmm. That's 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 that that's how that's how the rule is it works. We we want to see we want to see right. the rule, Matt. You said it was in the chat in the Discord, but I don't see it. At me at me in the Discord. Uh, I'm gonna I'm gonna mess with Bunk. Bunk said he was the original Woo Pig on social media. These guys stole my logo, just slightly <laughs> altered it. Yeah. <laughs> 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 Hey, hey, you hear what I said? Hey, that, I told him. Like I said clearly, like we doing it better than you did. <laughs> that's like saying, that's like saying I, hey, that's like saying I wrote a rap. Me, I wrote a rap ten years ago, but Rick Ross stole it. Yeah, <laughs> right. I mean, it is what it is. I mean, you see the you see the logo. It ain't ours. It wasn't yours. We stole that. And if they come come knocking on the door, I got something in the in the uh, bank to just swap it out real quick. That's how you do. Uh, <laughs> I mean, the, the the best things in life are duplicated, man. They replicate it. I'm sorry. They just, oh, just yeah. repackage. It's whatever. That's it. We love you, boy. Nothing new under the sun. <laughs> just different That's people exactly doing the facts. <laughs> oh, you DM'd it to me. Okay, cool. Here we go. I, I got you, Matt. Now, I'm going I'm to read through this because uh, spring transfer portal rules explain. Yeah. I'm a I'm a I'm gonna copy this and throw this in the chat. Uh if somebody ever wanna read this. Cause it's actually a whole article that explains that. Hey o <laughs> OD, I just I just want to give a shout out real quick to everybody that donated to made my trip to Fateful possible. Man, y'all have made my a dream come true. I had such a blast. I felt like a wish. I'm, I felt like a make a wish kid because I won a game of dominoes. I mean, it was it was it was a, it was a beautiful I, I time. Playing. I want to thank everybody. Tonka Todd, stop lying. You only happy because you found out we were classmates. Don't be tripping. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the, well, well, I was well, happy about so that too. Everybody. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, you you yeah. were excited once you heard that. Yeah, I mean, they, these dudes graduated, like, from the same high school, same class, you know. Well, I mean, and it couldn't have been more than 22 of y'all. <laughs> you know what I'm saying, Danny, from the Steve. Talk to Ty, he must don't understand. We had, we had, we had plenty walking. That's I mean, right. There was, we, we had a lot. What's a lot? 30? No. Nah, <laughs> what, what we have, Tonka? We it was it was it was a class. See, our class was I want to say like two hundred or almost two hundred, wasn't it? Yeah, they they don't understand that. No, no two hundred. That's still small. That school so, up here ain't got two hundred because they dropping out. Uh, according uh, to mm -hmm. this, according to this article, <laughs> it says <laughs> players wishing to transfer between schools. Must have entered the portal, the transfer portal, by February second to be eligible for fall sports. For the rest of college football, that date is May first to end of the spring transfer portal window. So that is right, man. If you're on the SEC roster and you ain't transferred before February second or hit it in a portal, you can't you can't play uh, in fall. According to mm, this uh, this else. news article, so not way not way. in the SEC, right? Not in the SEC. Dang! So, so you gotta, Ooh -wee. so at least we wouldn't have to if if those other guys transfer those receivers, um, we they would have to worry about we ain't gonna play the against SEC. them, <laughs> right? <laughs> Which we hope that ain't true. <laughs> and I think it's cap. That's that's my take on well. It. You got to think that also works in the reverse. That means if you're Arkansas trying to fill positions, 
you can't go get SEC guys to fill those positions now. Now you got to go out to the Big 12, the ACC. You're going to have to go out to lesser conferences in hopes to find diamonds in the rough. Mm. Yeah. Guess it is what it is, man. We're gonna make we're gonna make one more loop around. We're gonna call it a night. Uh, we're gonna say anything you want to bring up about this weekend, the spring game, basketball. The floor is yours. We're gonna start with you, Tonka. Well, I say I'm excited about Calipari. I say let's cow them hogs. Um, and football, I'm not as excited. I'm I'm glad to see some some improvement from last year. So that that's something positive to build on. I, I think the secret to Arkansas success though lies in the underclassmen, not not in the senior class. Okay. Box, what say you? I just want to say that um I had a good time this weekend. I appreciate everybody coming out so I can meet everybody. I mean, the hill wasn't kind to your boy walking back to the car, but I made it. <laughs> so <laughs> It was it was it was a good weekend. <laughs> you big cold blooded dummy. <laughs> so Jimmy Fly, any anything you want to say about this weekend? What stood out to you? The 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 game, basketball, whatever you want to talk about right now. First box, did you did you roll down the hill? Is that what happened? Did you take a tumble? <laughs> nah. I, you don't want to talk I, about I it. I wish I could have rolled. I wish I could have rolled up the hill. Well, you know, a box can't roll. I know, right? <laughs> exactly. exactly. <laughs> I, had some, hey, I had somebody pushing this box up the hill, though. So I was good. Okay. All right. All right. But now, um, Calipari coming over, man. I think uh, S Flick, like Nick Saban, coming over to Arkansas to coach football, man, on the basketball level, in my opinion. I don't know how successful he's going to be. Uh, I think it's going to do good from a you know revenue perspective. So coaching wise, we, we'll just have to wait and see what happens. Uh, football team looking good. I don't know how many wins it's going to translate to the actual you know season, but we're looking all right there. We already spoke about where we need to improve on, but other than that, I enjoy watching the spring game, enjoying seeing uh, an uptick in offense from where we were last year. Uh, outside of that, uh, oh, I know I was going to say something to y'all earlier. Y'all was talking about them uh, passes to the right hand side for uh, Traylon Green. Coach Pippen spoke on that in the practice, saying that that was one of his weaknesses. So they may have been working on that through some play calling. I don't know. I'm just saying. Other than that, though, the, I think going to yeah. the right, going to the right. Yeah. Ah. Uh, yeah. Okay. You, we said that. Yeah. I think Box said that it, when we was in, he was at the game. He was like, yeah, I think they probably forcing him to throw right. Yeah. He's, you see what happened when he throw it to the left, didn't you? Yeah. It you was know, nice. It, it's nice. <laughs> but other than that, man, everything looking good. Appreciate y'all as always, man. Go Hawks. Yes, sir. Appreciate you. Yes, sir, man. Appreciate you coming and kicking with us. Yes, sir. G, what about you, man? What what stood out for you? Uh, for, what stood out for me is good weekend, man. To secure a coach like Coach Cal, man, was a huge win. It's probably one of the biggest things uh, in my Razorback fan history since, I guess, winning the national championship back in '94. So that was pretty big for our for our um, for our school. Um, the basketball team is going to be on an uptrend. It's going to be awesome. So that was big. Uh, we had a great turnout, <clears throat> you know, for everybody coming and kicking it with us. So that was nice. But um, uh, as far as the spring game, man, it was just good to see some football, man. We, you know, we we deal with basketball and then we wait for football. It's either football season or something else. So we, I, I was just fun to go to the to the um, to the stadium. And get out there, man, and let the sun beat on you for a little bit and see some hear some pads clapping. So it was really good, man. And I just uh I just think it was a overall good a good weekend. Yeah. Scout King. So the floor is yeah. yours for the next few minutes, whatever you want to talk about. Uh whatever you want to speak on, you can go ahead and get it off your chest right now. Yeah. Well, you know, I'm football, I'm all football, but uh, I throw something in there for basketball sake. Uh, with Caterpillar first year, just be prepared to get about 18 to 21 wins. And uh, that's about it. And uh, Shoot that shot at football, him, uh, <laughs> football, 
Uh, I'm just being, I'm just going to be honest. You, you know, but that, that ain't my, that ain't my specialty. That's why I can't be short, but, uh, I'm going to go with my specialty lies in this football. I think we're going to be all right. Uh, on offense, long as you don't take no, no major injuries, they got to make sure the backup quarterback is on deck. They got to make sure we three deep in running back for show. And uh, we got to at least be uh, about – we got to be deep on the, on the wide receiver. And now defense, I think uh, the – man, I, I, I'm not really liking what I'm seeing out of DBs, to be honest. I'm not really I'm, – I'm, I'm kind of real shaky on them. And uh, I hope number 11 don't have no sophomore slump. You know what I'm saying? So, other than that, I hope they stay together through the summer, through the workouts, and come together in the fall. And then the team, the team we go roll out is the team we go roll out. So once the schedule starts, it ain't no stopping until it's over. So we hoping for the best. But uh, I think we're gonna be all right though. All right, good deal. If, they, if, if the team got the dog mentality, if the team has a whole, is together, and they come as together as a team and had this dog mentality, I think we can go. We can go far as we want to go, man. Because I don't think they scared of nobody on their schedule at all. So I think we can. We can probably do some damage, and it's gonna start with the quarterback making splash plays and have the team scared. Like, yeah, they dangerous. You know what I'm saying? If he can pull off his skill set and not get hurt, I think I think we're gonna be pretty dangerous. We're gonna be something to talk about because that's gonna open it up for a lot of other skill players. If that quarterback is dangerous, you can't stop him. Yeah. Hey, I I I like everything you said right there, man. Thanks for coming on the on the uh, the pod tonight and uh, talking football with us. I know you love some football, man. So I'm glad you called in, man. Uh, man, Tonka, we appreciate you. appreciate you. Good seeing you again on the show. Hey, football yes, bring sir. out Good all the OGs. You, uh, so yeah, we <laughs> we we definitely appreciate it. Um, thanks for coming in and kicking it with us, man. It was good meeting you this weekend as well. Uh, look forward to the next time, man. Same here. Oh, yeah, he Dang. hit the button quick. <laughs> it wasn't me. And then so. The- uh man, for me, man, it was a it was what stood out to me uh this weekend was the love uh that was shown to us, man, uh at the meetup, at the game, uh all the parents uh that came up to us and told us, hey man, we we love your show. We watch your show. Don't be too hard on my kid. Uh so <laughs> <laughs> so they know how we, we keep get it real. We're gonna give them the smoke now. We hey, we're gonna give we them love the smoke them, with, though. Yeah, but, hey. It, it, you know it's funny. Uh, that's one of the reasons why I didn't work, like want to meet a lot of the uh, players because I feel like if I meet a player, I'm gonna be like nice to him. I'm like, ah, but he a friend of the show. But if I don't know the player, like I only see them from the football side yeah. of things, I can I feel yeah. more I can at be liberty more to my, say myself with my yeah. takes. Yeah, so, I'm with you. Yeah, yeah. So, but it was cool. Uh, just but, man, just uh, we gonna get, we gonna, but we gonna still bring the smoke though. Remember right. that. Yeah, one hundred percent, one hundred percent. But I enjoyed the weekend, man. It was great, man. Uh, mm-hmm. For me, I said everything I need to say as far as uh, what I think these halls gonna do. Uh, shout out to Tyrone Broad, man. Dude is a different player. Yeah. This year. Yes, sir. Yeah, he a different player, man. And uh, I think with him and Armstrong, one two. Hey, we uh, Santana. Santana, shout out Santana. He didn't get off this weekend, but him in that slot, he gonna be special. Mm-hmm. Um, I don't know what we gonna do at, at kickoff return. We still got Bryce Stevens on the on the team. I don't understand why he ain't back there kicking about the and catching kickoffs. But it maybe it just goes to show what Sam was saying that hey, the special teams coach. Hey, we may have to holler at you, my guy Fountain. Oh, uh, G, what about you, man? Take us out of here. Whatever you got to say, man. Man, yo. First of all, what I want you guys to do is I want you guys to experience peace of mind 
with Insurance Max. These guys are your one-stop shop for home, auto, and commercial insurance. And we're talking about uh, all over the state. So don't wait. Call today for your free, no obligation quote. And secure your future with Insurance Max. It's where protection meets affordability. So you can give Wes or Caleb or Sandy a call and you can start to safeguard what matters to you the most. That number is 870-534-2823. Again, that number is 870-534-2823. And as always, we're going to give a shout out to the OGs. That's 3M Electric. They are an electrical contractor serving Northwest Arkansas, and they do both uh, commercial and residential electrical contracting. These guys are an SD, V-O-S-B. That is a service-disabled veteran-owned small business. These guys are dependable and reliable with no job being too big or too small. So when it comes to all your electrical needs, give 3M Electrical a call. That number, 479-408-9865. Again, that number is 479-408-9865. And when you talk to all of our sponsors, you tell them that you heard it over here at the Woo Pig Podcast. Oh, 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 my God. Man, for me, man, I had a good time. Man, we, we got to play some dominoes with Tonka Todd and Big Man Ross and me and OD, man. We played I mean, we play spades. And they came back to the crib, man, and kicked it with us and at the games, man. We out here. We in the streets, man. That's, you know, that's what we really wanted people to see is we are the same the same people that you see right here you know all all of the people that's who we are that's who box is in person it's a beautiful thing that you know that we're doing it was we we don't pretend to be anything uh this is is we're this these people whenever you see us so thank you for everybody to come out and kick it with us man it was great but i do have some bad news uh over the weekend we found out that uh, they have moved that Little Rock game to Thursday. You big cold-blooded dummy. So they moved it to Thursday. So that really kills everybody's plans. So more than likely, we will probably attend the game, but we will not be doing the big tailgate and stuff like we initially had planned and been planning and you know, so it's gonna kind of disappointing for us. I know it's kind of disappointing for for a lot of you guys because that was gonna be your opportunity to come down and kick it with us. So what we're gonna do, uh, we haven't decided which game, but we're gonna get uh, go to a game up in Fayetteville this year. The the hill gonna be buzzing this year with all the new stuff that they got going on. Uh, so we're gonna pick a game and then we'll let you guys know. So if you guys can get some tickets, hey, y'all can come up there and kick it with us. We would love, absolutely love to have you. Uh, come up there and kick it with us. Just spend the weekend with us. And just like we did this weekend, man, we'll go out, we'll have a good time, and we'll just, you know, show some appreciation for what, um, you know, everything that you guys do for us. So, but that's coming. We're, we're going to, uh, we'll get together. We'll talk about that. So, yeah, we we still want you guys to come together. But, yeah, so that uh, August the 31st, which is now August the 29th, we ain't going to be doing nothing. So, kind of disappointing. But anyway, hey, Man, we appreciate everybody, man. It's been a great, another great show. And I don't got nothing really else, got nothing else to say, but but you do know what your boy G Holmes, aka Big Sexy, like to say. I said what I said. Oh, oh, oh my God. And we out. Yeah, it's the 501, baby. Uh-huh. You know how we get down on the Wolfie podcast. Woo! Shout out.